Hello people. Today I want to talk about dysmenorrhea. So a simple definition of uh, dysmenorrhea is a painful period. But uh, this is a, a very simplified definition because obviously uh, a pain, normal periods uh, can be painful. So our women can have normal periods that have some degree of pain with them. But the main, there is a very big difference between a normal period that uh, has some pain with it and dysmenorrhea. And the main difference is that the pain in dysmenorrhea is so great that it debilitates the woman. It reduces uh, her daily activity or decreases. So, uh, our women can do nothing uh, when they have these, this kind of pain. They are mainly staying at home and they have this very unusual and heavy, unusual and heavy pain in the pelvis uh, area and in the lower abdomen. So the difference is uh, between the normal, a little bit painful period and the dysmenorrhea period, the dysmenorrhea pain is a great pain that limits the daily activity, which the normal painful period does not do. So the main key, the key feature of these problems of the of dysmenorrhea, the key element is obviously pain. There is a with the pain there can be other symptoms, and that all depends on various factors. But the main key element is that, the, that our patients feel a pain that is very connected to the menstrual period, better to say to the last phase, the menstru menstrual phase of the menstrual period when uh, we expect bleeding. So in order to understand this menorrhea, the best way to understand this problem is its classification. So this menorrhea is classified into primary, so on this side is primary, and into secondary dysmenorrhea. So primary dysmenorrhea basically primary Primary dysmenorrhea is a problem that is happening with the first menstruation a girl has in her life or two years after. So, with the first menstruation, it can happen. So, with the manner or two years after that, After that, if there is pain that is uh, severe um, with the menstruation, with the beginning of the menstruation or a few days after its beginning, this is called uh, primary dysmenorrhea. So, this, uh, the main element, the main symptom, obviously, of uh, this disease is pain. And the etiology is a little bit fishy, even though there is a significant theory about it. So, a main element of this disease when we are talking about, about etiology is that if we look the, at, the, at the genital system in these cases. So, these are young females and their genital system has no, no uh, uh, pathological changes. So, in the majority of the cases, the genital system here is normal. If you look at it with ultrasound, however you examine it, it will be normal. So there is a theory how 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 this pain is developing in these early uh, years, uh, in these first years of uh, a menstrual uh, period in a female. Basically, uh, the lining uh, of uh, our of the uterus, so the endometrium produces uh, when it is uh, when it 
degrades in the menstrual phase of the menstrual cycle, so in the last phase when it is starting to fall off and being eliminated out of vagina, it is producing too much prostaglandins. And these prostaglandins uh, then cause muscle spasm, spasms in the muscle layer of the uterus and that is causing pain. So in detail to examine this, so basically if I take this endometrium and enlarge it, basically this, I will enlarge this part of the uterine wall. So this part of the uterine wall will be enlarged here. So this is the endometrium. This is the myometrium and this is the perimetrium. So the theory goes that this part, when it is being shredded and released, so first into the uh, cavumutary and then into the vagina, it actually is being destroyed and all the cells are being destroyed. And when the cells are being uh, destroyed physically, they release a lot of uh, substances. One of the substances is prostaglandin 2-alpha. Also, there is uh, leukotriens, uh, vasopressin and others, but this is regarded as the main, uh, for now, the main substance that is causing the problem. This substance causes muscle spasms in the muscular uh, layer of the uterine valve. So spasm. And spasm causes ischemia. And of course, when we have ischemia and spasms, this will lead to pain. So our women that have this... Um, a lot of this uh, prostaglandin secreted when this is eliminated, they will have greater spasms, ischemia, and eventually pain. So this is the main explanation why these uh, healthy women with normal uh, anatomically and histologically normal uh, 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 gyneco gyneco gynecological organs have uh, pain is this theory that prostaglandins uh, are produced in an excess and actually uh, when you look at the menstrual fluid uh, in these cases in, uh, in these patients there will be more prostaglandin to alpha in these uh, menstrual secretions. Another uh, plus for this uh, theory that, it's, that it is actually caused by prostaglandin uh, secretions is that uh, NSAIDs, so we come to the therapy of this, NSAIDs actually work very well. And this is logical because NSAIDs are inhibiting an enzyme, so they, they inhibit cyclooxygenase. And cyclooxygenase is an enzyme that is needed for prostaglandin production. So if it is inhibit, inhibited, we don't have many prostaglandins more. So this is why these are good in these cases. So this is the basic uh, and simple explanation of this primary, primary dysmenorrhea. Then we come to the second part of this. This is the secondary uh, dysmenorrhea, which is has different traits, obviously, the secondary uh, dysmenorrhea. Or secondary dysmenorrhea. The secondary dysmenorrhea happens actually in females that are uh, in their reproductive years, mostly in their, so in their reproductive uh, years, basically in the middle uh, reproductive years. So basically after 25 years old, we start seeing most of these cases uh, of secondary dysmenorrhea. So the key element is here we have 
young girls who develop a painful period in their in the first years uh, in the in the first um, uh, in the first menstrual periods or a few years after and here we have females in their reproductive years so mostly in many of these cases uh, we actually find an underlying cause so there are some um, pato anatomical uh, etiologies to this problem so basically there is some underlying disease that is causing secondary uh, this pain that we see and that is classical for dysmenorrhea a pain in the uh, pelvis or lower abdomen so in order to uh, understand the etiology and to remember it easy the etiology is divided into two main causes basically a secondary dysmenorrhea can be caused by uterine causes so something on the level of the uterus is causing the problem for example we have here a fibroid so a myo myoma and this myoma can of course cause a pain very painful periods so uh, this is one possibility then there are many others for example adenomyosis so adenomyosis is basically to show it here if a part of the endometrium somehow lands here and starts uh, growing in the muscular layer so if the endometrial layer gets into the muscular layer and starts developing then that is called adenomyosis then for example infections in the uterus uh, tumors and uh, uh, and other conditions polyps and so on uh, cervical stenosis all can be an underlying cause for secondary dysmenorrhea the second part of the classification are extra uterine causes so very easy to remember everything outside the uterus that is causing causing secondary dysmenorrhea is an extra uterine cause so for example here we have a cyst uh, ovarian cyst that is causing a problem most of these are functional that are causing problems then endometriosis endometriosis is basically when the inner lining of the uterus gets somehow uh, uh, outside the uterus so normally the endometrium is lining the uh, cavum uterine and it is not normal for it to be present anywhere else but it, if, it, if, if it would somehow get into the peritoneum and implant there then it can cause problems and one of them can result with pain uh, in the part in the menstrual phase of the menstrual cycle or secondary dysmenorrhea in this case many different tumors of the fallopian tube of the ovaries uh, tumors of different organs like the uh, bladder because it is in a tight connection uh, with the uh, genital organs and so on so on inflammations uh, scarring adhesions or all can be extra uterine causes for a pain and uh, uh, for pain and uh, lead to secondary dysmenorrhea so there are these two main uh, elements main features um, that secondary dysmenorrhea pr primary dysmenorrhea is a problem in younger patients in their first uh, menstrual cycles and it can be uh, it is markedly uh, pain and it can the pain can be followed with headaches nausea vomiting and so on but the pain here is the main problem here we have older females in the reproductive years underlying patho anatomical problems that can be uterine or extra uterine in their etiology and with pain there can be also other significant symptoms like for example infertility 
dyspareunia or uh, uh, pain, uh, mm, painful intercourse, then various pains, uh, uh, lower back pain, problems with defecation, uh, abnormal vaginal bleeding, and so on. So these, this is the uh, simple explanation and comparison between uh, primary and secondary dysmenorrhea and an explanation of the problem and the disease itself. Here it can be ter uh, 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 the therapy can be only with NSAIDs and if it is caused sometimes the cause is uh, uh, psyche so sometimes a psychiatrist can do wonders in this case but sometimes if we don't find a patoanatomical problem here also here it can be psychosomatic. If it is uh, in this case caused by an underlying condition, obviously we need to un eliminate the underlying condition in order to get uh, rid of the secondary dysmenorrhea. Thank you very much.